Well, everybody, welcome back to Cavalier Insider, where this week, Virginia traveling down to Tallahassee to take on Florida State. We're joined by Daily Progress Sports Editor John Shiflett on the left and Daily Progress Executive Sports Editor Jerry Ratcliffe Hootie on the right. Hootie, first things first, let's, let's talk about this T-shirt we got on here. Well, uh, I, we try to make a weekly tribute to something uh, related to the Virginia game. This is a uh, T-shirt from the 93... Uh, national championship game in the Orange Bowl when uh, Florida, State, Florida State beat Nebraska. It's kind of a fun game. Uh, uh, I think they went undefeated that year, and uh, uh, it was Bobby Bowden's first national championship. So uh, I was able to have the good fortune to cover that game, and it's just uh, one of the uh, memories from that night. Well, the memories from Tallahassee for Virginia have not been good over the years. Let's talk a little bit about UVA heading down into a place that's been kind of a, a house of horrors, if you will. It really has. Uh, they've never won a, a game in Tallahassee, and in fact, most of them have been blowouts. I think uh, they did play them close. Uh, it, uh, it was around the year, uh, somewhere around 1990, uh, 95, when Virginia beat them here. I think it was the year afterwards that Virginia gave them a pretty good game down there, but uh, uh, most of the games have been blowouts down there, and it's, I, I don't know what it is, but it seems like that uh, no matter what kind of team Virginia takes down there, uh, they get off to a bad start and things kind of implode, snowball, and get out of control. Even I think even when uh, Al Groh had that great team in the early 2000s and they were ranked... Uh, Seventh in the country, yeah. I believe, and were undefeated, I think, and uh, went down to Florida State and just got their doors blown off. So uh, it, it's a place that if you're not careful uh, with that kind of atmosphere and a team that's not used to playing in that environment, if you're not careful, things can get away from you really easily. And talking to Mike London this week, uh, he said, you know, some parts of this Florida State team look like the Florida State of old. That's not necessarily yeah. good news for Virginia, particularly uh, Florida State's defense, and uh, and they're playing well. They won five games in a row, and uh, they're they're peaking at the right time. It appears. And you mentioned Florida's defense, John. That their rushing defense is pretty stout, and that's probably going to be, I, I would take it, one of the key matchups to look at their defense versus Virginia's what has been a pretty good running game. It could be the storyline to watch in the game. Florida State has the uh, number one rush defense in the ACC, number four in the country overall. They're only giving up 85 yards a game, only about 2.4 yards per carry. But we all know that's Virginia's strength. They take pride in running the football behind that big offensive line and the, the three-headed monster at running back. Virginia's really going to have a tough time running the ball, but if they can establish the run, it may give them a puncher's chance in this game. And that secondary, too, will be, I guess, that's something to watch, too. UVA's uh, secondary looked a little shaky against Duke at times last week. And as we know, FSU, with all those receivers who, um, they could kind of, like you were saying before, throw it around everywhere, that, that's going to be something to watch. Yeah, the secondary's been tested a lot lately. Um, Duke got, uh, beat them deep a couple of times. Uh, NC State beat them deep. Miami, Maryland. Florida State uh, has a really good receiving core. They have uh, five receivers that have over 20 receptions. They have four receivers that have over four touchdown catches already this year. So Virginia's really going to have to uh, step it up in the secondary. They're probably going to see a lot in three three and four wide receiver looks. So their secondary is really going to have to uh, buckle down. They're probably going to have some man coverages, and they're going to have to really uh, slow them down if they're going to have a chance to win this ball game on Saturday. Well, time to put you guys on the spot here. we got to get some predictions out of you. Jerry, first I'll turn to you. How do you see this week's game going? Well, I think another thing that's going to uh, be a big storyline as well is special teams because Virginia's punt return game has been not so good lately. Yeah. And uh, Florida State may have the best punter in the country. He, this guy buries teams deep in their own territory, and, and that's that, it puts them in a bind because they either have to give up field position or sometimes turn it over. And uh, the way Virginia's been doing it, they might want to put Perry Jones back there this week instead of uh, – to rail the freshman. Because, I heard they were going to put you back there. <laughs> well, I, you know, I don't know about that, but <laughs> uh, I think that could be one of the keys to the game. And Florida State has a uh, also a dynamic kickoff return guy, so and a punt return guy. So it, you know, special teams could be a big part of this. But EJ Manuel's playing well. I think if he hadn't got hurt early in the season, Florida State would still be ranked really high in the polls. Uh, they're a 17-point favorite in this one. 
I have to give a nod to the Seminoles. I just can't see them losing this game at home. And John? I agree with Hootie. Uh, it's going to be a lot for Virginia to overcome. Florida State has a really good run defense, really good uh, passing game. Those are two areas that uh, Virginia could be exploited in. Um, I think Florida State gets the win, and um, Virginia falls to 7-4. Uh, seven and, seven and four. Well, it should be interesting. Be sure, everybody out there, to pay attention to Cavalier Insider on dailyprogress.com. All the updates, all the reports. Jerry and Jay Jenkins down in Tallahassee. Guys, thanks for joining us. See you next week.